we don't have to use the world standards for how our kids act. Oh, my kid's not acting like the world. That's awesome. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, that's great because if you're, if your kid's not acting like the world, that's what, you know, God says to be different than the world. He also says to be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. How do you make your kid wise while trying to keep his purity, really maybe innocence, a better word is purity. And, um, and that's this balance that we're fighting as parents. We believe that you are strong by design and you were made in God's image to have a strong body, mind, and spirit. You're listening to the number one strength and health authority podcast in the world. So let's get ready to unlock your potential and transform your life in today's episode. Well, hey, what's going on? Welcome to another episode of the Strong by Design podcast. My name is Jared. I'm one of the hosts uh, on the show where we truly believe that God has a design uh, for us to live and he has designed it. And when we step into that design, things work the way that they're supposed to work. And so that's all things from the way that we're taking care of our bodies uh, through nutrition, through fitness, the way that we're uh, challenging our minds and the different ways that we can do that. And uh, our souls and our spirits, they God has designed them to work and operate a certain way. And so we want to give you insight into what that looks like, uh, the way to uh, step into God's design in, in those things. And today we have a really cool guest. His name is Don Manning. Um, he and his wife and really his kids uh, are all part of this crazy cool family. It's a ministry that uh, they are helping people really, uh, these are my words, not his, but helping them get back to God's design for family. What does that look like? And uh, especially in a world that feels chaotic, uh, it feels uh, like we're being pulled in a million different directions. It feels like uh, God's morality has slipped out the back door. And so uh, here we are, we, we get to have a conversation uh, with Don and, and learn a little bit more uh, about what God has been teaching him and, and his family and, and the, the ministry that they're called to and, and helping us understand what does it look like for us to step into this idea of being a crazy cool family? What does it look like for us to step into uh, God's design for family and, and really get back to, to what that looks like. So, Don, thank you so much for, for being here and taking the time to, to chat. Uh, we were able to chat a little bit beforehand, and it's just, it's cool to see God raising up these, uh, it's not even new ideas, right? It's, it's really this coming back to uh, an understanding uh, of God's original purpose and design for family. And, and it's, it's exciting for me uh, to see it happening in different spaces. And, I, and I'm just really excited to, to be able to connect with you today and, and hear your heart and what, what God is, has brought you and your family to. Yeah, thanks. You know, already I'm... Um... You're talking about fitness. I'm feeling guilty about the cinnamon roll I ate this morning. <laughs> and and uh, so, you and me you know, both. Yeah. And so, um, but it just really does, you know, you said that we're going back, we're, we're bringing back in. And that's true. Although it's also, you know, what here's what I see is that it's a, it's a new day of parenting too, because um, there's more and more influences on our kids. And, uh, and also, but you're right, God has a design for family and we are bringing back these um these, the principles are of scripture. They've been there forever, but how we apply them yeah. is actually changing as our culture mm -hmm. changes, as technology becomes more pervasive, as kids are getting older at younger ages. I mean, kids, yeah. our kids are getting older and older at younger and younger ages. And so um, that means our parents need to be prepared in different ways that, and there's also different methods that are being successful, you know, we were, and so talking about all that, how you figure out, you know, going back to the cinnamon roll, it's like, one of the things I want to tell parents a lot is you don't have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. There's some things that you can focus on that will help you along the journey and help your journey, uh, have be, uh, be more likely to be successful. But we're all navigating this journey here and we're all making mistakes and we're all learning. And so uh, we want to talk about that today. We want to talk about it in that context of, yeah. of how we're going to win, but also how we're going to be okay with some of the hurdles that come up and, and, and that this is a journey that happens over, you know, you're going to be a parent for, I mean, I'm working on when I got married, uh, my wife brought a two-year-old to the marriage. And we've had seven kids, so I'm, I've got a senior in high school, so literally that's about to graduate. 
And so I'm, I've been parenting for 34 years. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the journey we're on. We're not on this. We're not going to fix this in a day or two. But it gets better and better if we do certain things over time. Does that make sense? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I think that parenting, uh, it can be a scary thing. Uh, and it's like, you can't run away. I mean, I guess some people do run away from, from it, unfortunately. Um, or they try to hand off parenting to, to the church or try to hand off parenting to the schools or, yeah. or, or, or somebody else. And not there's this fear of, of taking that responsibility. And so I know that uh, you feel the same way as I do, that we really want to help parents uh, Take those steps in order to step into what it looks like to to reclaim, uh, you know, being that parent. You talked about uh, influences, and you talked about uh, kids having to grow up at a younger age, and that's that's one thing for for our family. We've tried to keep our kids as innocent as possible for as long as possible. Our oldest is only twelve, so we're we're a few years behind you. But uh, sometimes when I look at my twelve year old who's now in middle school. He doesn't act the same as a lot of other middle schoolers, and it almost seems sometimes uh, like it, it can make you feel like he's behind uh, because he's not acting older. Uh, but then I, I s- step back and I go, I think that that's a positive thing um, to try to protect the the innocence and, and have him not grow up too fast. Um, so maybe – uh, I'm sure you have different thoughts on, on that as well. But uh, Well, one thing is, is that um, play is children's work. Hmm. And so when children play, um, they are actually, they're working, they're, you know, it, it's interesting. Um, the other day, I, I don't remember the numbers on it, so I'll butcher the numbers on this, but it's something like kids laugh like hundreds of times a day. And adults laugh like 20 times a day. I mean, mm. again, I don't know what the number is, but it, there's your contract. Yes, my family, they tell you I'd laugh like twice <laughs> if I laugh at all. <laughs> yeah, and yet, um, you know, we kids, God wants, he says, I've given you joy and I want your joy to be complete. You know, mm. and, and C.S. Lewis said that joy is the serious business of heaven. And um, mm. and so he, uh, you know, he's right about that, that, that uh, we, we, I think it's great to, we have a lot of discussions about how much do we protect our kids and so, but, but there is an innocence that, that gradually will get lost over time. But we want to, but what we want to do is replace that with God's innocence mm-hmm. and, and God's purity in their lives. We want to, and, and so the, I do think it's good that um, we try to protect, we can also overprotect our kids. Sure. But, but I think there is, we don't have to use the world standards for how our kids act. Oh, my kid's not acting like the world. That's awesome. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, that's great. Because if, if your kid's not acting like the world, that's what, you know, God says to be different mm-hmm. than the world. And so we're always exploring. The, we, we don't, don't want to be scared of those differences, but we also want to also, he also says to be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Mm-hmm. Okay, so how do you make your kid wise while trying to keep his purity, really maybe innocence, a better word is purity. Mm-hmm. And um, and that's this balance that we're fighting as yeah. parents throughout the time. But both of them are important. I mean, that's that preparation, right? I mean, eventually they're going to become adults. And so uh, you can't keep them innocent forever because then they don't know how to handle things when they're on their own. Well, I'll give you an example of that. You know, uh, one of my boys, I'll, I always kind of do one of them so I don't isolate, you know, sure. him and it's a story, but, you know, um, one of them um, went to college and, and came back and said, mom and dad, you didn't tell me enough because he, he wound up in situations where he was a little bit embarrassed because he wasn't knowledgeable. Now that doesn't mean mm-hmm. he has to experience it, mm-hmm. but we could have done a better job of helping him to be knowledgeable about some things so mm-hmm. that he enters social situations and can do it in a way that's that now it doesn't mean he wasn't prepared he was prepared in many ways but there were some we, we learned out of that and so we have one that's a senior in high school we're like hey we need to do a better job of preparing him because he mm-hmm. is innocent in some ways there is a purity mm-hmm. about him but we also want him to be equipped to handle the yeah. social situations that come when he goes to college yeah that's good uh that's one of you guys wrote uh, a book I mean, you wrote it together, you and your wife, uh, 
but your kids are also participated in that. <laughs> and so uh, I appreciate it. So this is, I'll show the book real quick if you can see it. This is the Crazy Cool Family book. You can find it uh, on, on their website. You can find it on Amazon. Uh, but uh, something that, th that's what I appreciated. Uh, I'm going to appreciate it a lot in your guys' book. But uh, you guys actually went to your kids and asked them, hey, what do you think about this? And so you actually document, you know, their responses and things like that. I think that what a cool uh, uh, way to incorporate uh, and, and even for us to be able to go and ask our kids those questions to see their responses and their answers. Because sometimes I think you think you're being a good communicator and you think that they know things that maybe they don't actually know. Yeah. Well, there's a, there's a book I just got through reading called The Communication Code can't remember the author right now, but anyway, he, what, the, the, what I'll take out of the book forever is, is he asked this question, what is life like on the other side of you? Mm -hmm. and, and so I think as parents, you know, okay, we want to influence our kids, you know, whatever method we use, we might yell at them, we might, um, you know, avoid them, we might um, lecture them, or we might talk to them, or we might just listen to them. There's so many different ways, but we're all trying. We want the best for our kids. I rarely mm -hmm. meet a parent that doesn't want the best for their kids. I, I rarely meet a parent who doesn't care. Mm -hmm. So it's not about caring. It's not about loving our kids. We, we all love our kids. It's like, are we willing to, but, but we, we, we want to have influence in them is, is what we're doing being effective? Mm -hmm. And that's what we try. That's what we studied for years. You know, <laughs> Uh, Jared, with seven kids, it was like, I could see, like, after probably my first, I have four girls and three boys. So at one time, it was me and five women in my house. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and I realized that there were a lot of things, not only about women I didn't know, but about parenting I didn't know, yeah. and, and a lot of things about God I didn't know, and all these things. And so I am, uh, I, I was just desperate because I could see that I was going to have a really significant influence on my children. Yeah. Uh, you know, that, that there's no doubt that I was going to have this significant influence uh, and I only got one shot at it. Mm -hmm. And so I said, I've got to figure this out or my life and my family is going to be a train wreck. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 I want God's design for my family because, um, and what we found was is that, um, you know, we kept studying families ahead of us. We kept reading all the literature, reading God's word, and just saying, God, what are you saying about the keys to raising a godly family? And we just kept finding it comes down to connection. That the regardless of whether someone is a artist or an engineer, whether they're an athlete or playing guitar, um, whether they are a finance guy or a salesman or whatever it is, that the parents, uh, homemakers or d dual income, you know, I did whatever it was that the parents that connected to their kids and, and they created this, uh, this relational capital, if you will, those are the ones, again, there's no formula, there's no guarantee and there's no, uh, uh, there's, there's no, um, um, uh, there's no straight pathway cause it's everybody's different. But when those parents connected, we found that those parents, when they, uh, those parents were more likely to be successful than, the ones that didn't connect, yeah, and and that was huge for us. And so we kind of, um, you know, and really it makes sense that when you look at what Jesus said, when they asked Jesus what was most important, he didn't say obedience, he didn't say performance, he didn't okay. say you know that their perfection. He said love. Mm -hmm. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and then love your neighbor as yourself. Well, who's your most important neighbor? It's not Pam. the people, yeah. And what's the other thing? It's not the, yeah. It's not the people at church. Pam's our next door neighbor, just oh. to give that reference. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, exactly. You know, and so how? Okay, that's a great example. So, for example, you go to Pam, and you know, and you're talking to Pam over the over the fence, over the shrubs. You know, the classic, and and you're you're talking to Pam, and it's uh, and you're engaging with Pam, you're laughing with Pam, and your four year old comes up, and you're like, what are you doing? You know, it's mm -hmm. like uh, suddenly we turn and, we, and we're and we different to our children yeah. and the environment we create in our home is different than it is with people that are next mm -hmm. to us, you know? Yeah. But, 
And and so much of that's out of the fear. It's out of the control. It's out of the things. And um, yeah, yeah, those are things that are. Uh, it's very it's very selfish. I mean, and and I, I'm guilty. I'm I'm super guilty when it comes to uh, wanting my kids to do what I want them to do. It's because I want them to meet. Uh, a need of mine, you know, uh, or it's not even meeting a need. I, I don't want them to get in the way of me being able to meet a need of mine, whatever it might be. You know, it, it becomes yeah. very selfish very quick. I remember I had had a bad day of being a dad one day. I don't even remember what it was, uh, and I was just praying, and I felt God say to me, uh, "You know, if these if these were Jesus's kids, would you treat them that way?" Uh. Um, and and I thought. No, you know, like if I was babysitting Jesus's kids, how would you treat them? And ultimately, that, that's what we're doing, right? Like our, our 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 families are not our own. Our kids are not our own. They they've been given to us, especially as dads. Like uh, it's our responsibility to take care of them. But ultimately, we want them to be they, we want them to belong to Jesus, right? And, so good. I mean, it's so good. Know, I mean, think about that same situation with Pam. You know, mm-hmm. maybe your four year old is doing something that embarrasses you, mm-hmm. and so you're going to control that. So you won't be embarrassed in front of Pam. Well, mm-hmm. what's important is—is is our embarrassment more important, or is the health of the child the most important thing? You know, and so those are, those are, me. yeah, exactly. Those are <laughs> those are. I mean, and we do obviously the way we act as parents so often is, um, you know, uh, as we feel as we feel like that's most important. So that's the way we act. And, yeah. And, you know, I, I just uh, I remember as a. Um, you know, one of the things we really like for parents to do, what I really challenged, I was talking to a dad a couple of nights ago, and uh, a blended family, they've been married about three years, brought in six kids from two different marriages, and um, and we were, you know, they, they were struggling with some things. And he, and, but then I, one of the things I'd done is told the dads, hey, are you being a learner about family? Are you being a yeah. learner about being the best dad you can be? And he comes up to me at, afterwards and he goes, you know what? I have never thought of that before. He said, I am in the IT world and I'm always studying how to learn technology better. He said, I'm a personal trainer on the side. And he said, I'm always learning how to be a better personal trainer. And he Mm -hmm. said, I've never thought about learning to be an awesome dad. Mm -hmm. And I was like, great. If if that's all you took out of what we said tonight, and now I put you on the path of being a learner as a dad, then great let's go let's go yeah. make that happen because yeah. i think that you know that's how i started with this is because i'm a very competitive person mm-hmm. you know I, I i've run marathons i've i've uh, you know competed at you know different sports and uh, i just want to win and and i'm one of those that will go work hard to be you know be my best and whether it be you know in college it was like i was going to figure out how to create the perfect resume and so, you know, in a, in kind of a sort of negative slash positive way, when I started doing family, I'm like, okay, how do I win at this game? Yeah. You know, how, how, when, what does winning look like? And I thought that was negative for a while, but then I read where Paul says, forgetting what lies behind, looking forward to what lies ahead, we press on towards the goal. You know, and I started yeah. thinking about, well, how is family any different? God always wants us to be our best. He, he doesn't want us to be an ogre as we do that, but he does want us to, to pursue excellence in what we do. And it's like, what do we do? How do we do that in family? And I love mm-hmm. y'all's podcast because that's what you're about is what is God's design for your family? Basically, how do you how do you be your best? You know, like in fitness or whatever, you know, your best in fitness may be different than my best in fitness. Oh yeah. Right? Is, I mean, so. Yeah, yeah, body types are different. Personality types are different. We're all wired differently, absolutely. Yeah, and I, and I wanted that for family, too, as we started to have success in our family based on some concepts that we were following. I said, mm-hmm. I can't just write this. This isn't, it can't be a, a book about how to be the Mannings. Just, you know, right. because, and one, you don't want to be that. You want to be, you know, the best Haley's. You know, we want right. to be the best Smiths or the best, you know, whatever mm-hmm. that is. But, uh, but it, had to be, it had to be, you know, what, was, what would go across the Enneagram types and across mm-hmm. the personality types and everything else. 
Yep. Yeah, we, uh, I think having that humility uh, and uh, as a parent uh, and being able to not only have that humility with, with people on the outside, but having that humility with your kids um, and letting, you know, uh, a really good quote. I, I've said this a couple of times on the show. Uh, I can't even remember. I got to find out who, who said it. But basically they said, I didn't realize when I was growing up, I was watching my parents grow up. Um, (laughs) that's good yeah and uh there's so much truth to that you know i mean i i just turned 40 and i still feel like man i'm learning so much i i sat down with my 12 year old yesterday and i i told him i said you know look i'm sorry i'm sorry that you have to get the brunt uh, of of mom and i's learning uh, you have to you you take it on more than anybody else uh, because you're the oldest and we're you know I said we've never parented a 12 year old before and so we're learning how to do it with you you know right um, yes and uh, and he's like that's okay dad you know he, you know he he's very gracious to us you know and things along those lines but uh, I just wanted him to know like hey you're important and you're valuable uh, and uh, you know as parents, we're going to mess up uh, because we're, we're not perfect either, you know, and that, that, that's kind of the, the culture that we're, we're trying to, to develop with our kids is, 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 is a, a culture of, of learning and humility uh, as we approach life. Yeah, you know, in Deuteronomy uh, 6, I think it is, it says that you, you teach them along the mm-hmm. way. When you, yep. when, when you lie down, when you rise up, when you walk along the road, and yep. I love it that you had that conversation with with your son because you know um that humility goes a long way towards um helping them to feel like that um you know so often it's the parent needs to think they're perfect and they're Mm -hmm. and and therefore the kid needs to think they're perfect what does that do it creates hiding because we're not perfect and we we, hopefully we are you know we talk a lot at crazy cool family that it's not about perfection it's about direction you know Mm -hmm. it's, it's where you're going and if you're you know, and, and if you see your kid and you going along the way well, then that's where you want to be. Yeah. There's there's two big points in your book um, that, that you guys teach through. And, and it's not just in your book. You guys have other things that you, you teach these principles as well. But it's relational and cultural. Uh-huh. Um, that, uh, the, and, and they really go, I mean, as, even as we're having this conversation, I'm seeing how they're very, it's not one and the other. They're very intertwined. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, when I'm, I'm thinking of uh, this whole concept uh, of a relational culture, uh, how how do you? If I'm listening to this, okay, and these are for, this is for our listeners right now who are, are listening to this right now. They go, okay, I want to be a better parent, and I want to move into uh, relational parenting and not control parenting, and I want that to be a part of our our, our family culture. Yeah. What are some steps that we can take? Because it's really hard uh, because we think as parents, it's my job to give guidance as far as what, what to do and what not to do. How do, how do I move away from that in, in, in a way that uh, I, don't, I don't even know how to ask the question correctly. I think that you know probably where I'm, what I'm getting at. And, you know, some practical steps and application to moving away from the military family into the relational family. Well, and first of all, one of the things that um, I, I love to tell parents is, is that it doesn't mean we change our standards. Mm-hmm. That so often when we get into relationship and culture-based parenting, we think, oh, I'm going to be an easy parent now. Well, mm-hmm. I, need to be, I need to be tough on them, you know, and it's not a matter of, you know, I'm going to bet that, you know, my standard for my kids is I want them to love the Lord at a high level. Mm-hmm. Now, that doesn't mean I do think there's things with um, uh, achievements and things that do change. As you, you know, if my kid's really going to love the Lord, that may or may not mean he's a professional baseball player. Mm-hmm. You know, it depends on where God's voice. You know, you guys teach a lot, Jared, about hearing God's voice. Well, you know, we, one of the things we do is we release that to God's will for their lives. But mm-hmm. but the standards of them loving Jesus and uh, and treating people well and being confident in themselves. Actually, I think my standard moved up as I went as I became relational because yeah. doing relationships at a high level is so rewarding. But it, it's so rewarding personally, but it's also so benefiting to our children. When our children know how to connect with God. They know how to connect with their parents. Even they know how to connect with their siblings. 
Uh, they know how to relate to people in the outside world. Yeah, you know, I, I, literally, I, I went to my um, I, um, I went to my barber. I went to this new barber the other day, who I'd had the same barber for many years, and I needed a change. And so, because he retired, my barber retired. That's what happens when you get old. But uh, the, he uh, anyway. So I go to my kid's barber. And, and mm-hmm. my kid's barber's name is Lewis. And I said, Lewis, I'm meeting the famous Lewis. My boys have told me all about you. And you know what Lewis told me? He goes, I love having conversations with your boys. Mm. They are so insightful. Well, they've been taught to do that at home. Mm-hmm. You know, he didn't have to tell me that. I mean, maybe he yeah. did. Maybe he just wanted my business. I don't know. But I mean, mm-hmm. but, but, you know, but relationships are important. And, and it doesn't mean that you change the standards In Mm -hmm. fact, as we become relationally healthy, actually our ability to live goes up. Our standards of life goes up. And so relationships are, and one of the things we found as we started to study family a lot is we were managing more to the relationship and the connection and less to the behavior. Mm -hmm. So that's a principle that somebody can take with them that when we manage life to the relationship instead of to the behavior that the behavior the if the if the relationship is strong then the behavior will be the result of that Mm -hmm. if my child loves the lord they're going to be an easier kid to raise than if they don't love the lord if their relationship with god is strong if i know my child and i have a strong relationship with them I'm naturally going to parent them better. Why? Because I know them. If there's trust Mm -hmm. in the relationship, they're more likely, with relationship comes influence. Mm -hmm. So the more relationship we have, the more influence we have. And so often we're so focused on the behavior and controlling the behavior that we lose the relationship, which causes us to lose the influence. Yeah. Does that make sense? I know that, yeah, I I know that you have, like four pillars of of your culture um, as far as building a culture in a home. And one of those is safety. And it's, I mean, it sounds very much like uh, I used to work at a company called prep, which was prevention and relationship enhancement program is basically like preventative care for relationships. Um, And one of their key principles is making it safe to connect. Um, Uh And so what it sounds like is when you're investing in the relationship, you're making it safe to connect where when you're investing in the behavior, you're creating almost a a culture of fear and anxiety because they, they no longer have that safety to come share with you the things that are going on because they're afraid that they're going to get into trouble well if relationship is the is the what it's kind of where we're going with it culture is the how culture is the is the way we do it you know so in our pillars of culture one of those and it's things you think about what i what i really try to what we really try to do is create certain belief mindsets in parents um you know for example uh, and one of those we just already talked about is that relationship, the connection leads to influence. So I'm focusing less on control and more on connection because that, and ultimately in the long term, it's going to give me the most influence. So mm-hmm. another one would we would say, as far as the culture pillars, one of our pillars is to encourage. Mm-hmm. So what we talk about, there's five words that I leave with with every parent that I talk to just about is that we encourage extravagantly, and we correct carefully. Mm-hmm. It's not that we don't correct. It's just that most parents overcorrect and under-encourage, and so they lose the connection with their child. I mean, think yeah. about when you look at your friends. Who do you want to be around? Do you like being around that friend that's always criticizing everything you do? Guess mm-hmm. what? Our kids don't like it either. You know, back to your point about listening. And being safe, you know, it's not safe physically, it's safe relationally so that what if your kid can come to you with anything, you know, now and and so often, you know, let's go back to those standards for a minute. Okay, if if I always tell my child what to do and think about it from your own perspective, if somebody's always telling you what to do, what happens with that person? You tend to want to tune them out because Mm -hmm. they're always being critical. They're always telling you what to do. They're a know-it-all, they always know. But what do you do with that person? So often I have friends that are just great friends that just listen to me and almost make me draw out the advice. But many times as I talk to them, I'm coming up with my own solution. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Well, guess what? Our kids can a lot of times do the same. They're smarter than we give them credit for. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, how many times do you, so often I always say that, what if you make it their idea versus having it be your idea? What yeah. if you ask them questions? Hey, you know, so often my wife is like a master at this. I, one of the things I tell dads a lot, if you'll become a student of your wife instead of her critic, you'll be amazed what you learn about family. Because mm-hmm. many times these ladies that God has put in our lives are much better at the relationship part than we are as guys. Mm-hmm. But I would watch her just ask these questions to her kids or to other people. And all of a sudden the person would go or the child would go, hey, you know what? I probably need to go ask forgiveness from that person. Mm-hmm. And my wife would be like, wow, that's a good idea. Yeah. You know, she knew it all along. <laughs> yeah. But she never told them that. And, yeah. and then she got them to come to their own conclusion. It's like, when you do that, that's like next level ninja parenting. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, and and those are the things we teach. Again, it's not about changing the standards. It's like, what if we talk to them about their curfew as they get older, and then they come in on time because they want to? Mm-hmm. You know, they, it's not about having a rule in their lives. It's about, hey, it's good for me, you know. I, I talked to my my teenager, my last teenager at home all the time. I'm like, what are you doing home so early? Well, I got to get up in the morning. Mm-hmm. Great. You know, I'm not telling, it's not like I'm yeah. texting him at 930. Are you home yet? Are you home yet? Are you home yet? Mm-hmm. He's learned to do that on his own. And that's yeah. where we want to be as parents. Yeah. Yeah. There's, uh, there's an amount of uh, trust in it and God in those spaces as well, uh, really? because I know that as, as parents, we worry about our kids, you know? So uh, this is a, the first year that our, our son gets to go to, to middle school camp, you know, and it's going to be the first time that he's away for three days, you know? Um, and so there's that, there's an element there too of, uh, yes, I trust my kid to make good decisions, but I also trust that God's going to protect really? him. Or- on the journey to camp while he's at camp on his way back, which I, I think uh, as parents, we have to, that that's a growing thing for us as well, is learning how to let go of that control uh, and learning how to trust God in those situations because um, we think. Well, you know, Jared, man, the, Jared the, take, that, take that situation of camp. That's a great situation. And so like, um, you know, your child is going, there's supervisors that are, mm-hmm. that are there and and also, um, but but there's definitely ways for him to get in trouble. You know, mm-hmm. there's definitely ways for him to do that. And then just a couple of, you know, so one of the things, you know, that parents might do is they're just, it turns into a big lecture of, now don't do this and watch this and don't, you know, but what if you sat down and talked to him, and I'm sure, I bet you guys did this and said, hey, let's talk about camp. Mm-hmm. You know, you've never been there before. Guess what? I went to church camp when I was a little kid. I went to a deal called Camp Copus in Denton, you know, and telling kids, oh, wow, Dad, you went to church camp? How, you know, cause, mm-hmm. But you're like, you might even ask him at that point, what do you think are some dangers of going to church yeah. camp? Mm-hmm. And then, well, how are you going to, you know, what if some boys had some, you know, cigarettes mm-hmm. or something and they are vaping, not cigarettes now, it'd be vaping or whatever, but, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. they bring you and they're, they're over there in the woods and they wanted to, have you vape with them or whatever. I don't know if that can happen at church camp, sure. but I mean, you know, I'm just thinking about- Anything can happen at church camp. Exactly. And so, <laughs> you know, what would be helping him to go through scenarios? Yeah. And, and then let's say he came back from church camp and he said, dad, it happened and I tried it. Mm-hmm. Okay, now what do you do with that? Mm-hmm. Well, guess what? He's in your home. You get to deal with it there. You know, that's where, mm-hmm. you know, yes, and, and if he does it, Three, another two or three times, it's different. But when mm-hmm. you know, let, even letting your kids make mistakes, putting them in situations, I, I love it that you're even allowing it. Some parents would say, I'm not going to let my kid go to church camp because you never mm-hmm. know what's going to happen at church camp. You mm-hmm. know, or I'm not going to let my kid do certain things. So um, mm-hmm. that's the type of stuff that we're talking about is how you build relationship and you yeah. build culture into, you know, even mm-hmm. giving them the spiritual experience of church camp. That's an amazing thing to do as a parent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it is something that we we're learning how to grow into those spaces. I think as parents, uh, we're better when it comes to uh, 
like spiritual exercises or, or, or relationship with God where we can, we don't want to like, because we want to cultivate a relationship with our kids and, and God for them to have their own relationship and not to be us telling them how to have that relationship. So uh, we definitely do a lot of those asking the, you know, well, what do you think God would say about that? Or, you know, mm-hmm. uh, what, whatever it might be. Uh, a good example is uh, since we're picking on my oldest, we'll continue to pick on him. <laughs> uh, but uh, he came up to us one day and, and said, Said, man, I, I don't feel like I should be playing with Pokemon stuff anymore. And we're like, oh, interesting. Why? Why? Why is that? And uh, he said, well, I just feel like there's something, some sort of something evil tied to them. And I was like, uh, you know, tell me, tell me more about that. You know, it was more just asking questions. Right. We never said like, you can't do this or you can't do that. Um, I know, you know, Harry Potter is another one that is, seems to be pretty controversial. You know, people fall on one side or the other. And uh, obviously there's things that you, you protect your kids from that are, are definite dangers. Um, but some of these uh more borderline stuff you know we want we want our kids to come to their own conclusions about what god is teaching them um and and it, like you said they're they're way smarter than we give them credit for and they're very wise and discerning and and uh i'm surprised over and over again uh, the conclusions that they come to that you're like holy cow that's amazing you know i i, I don't know that i would have gotten there at, at your age and it also does it, you know, again, back to the standards, because I hear from a lot of moms and dads, well, your you're, you're dads especially, it's like, well, you're, you know, you're trying to, you know, have us be soft on the kids. And, and it's like, yeah. I don't think so, you know, I, I, because um, uh, I believe that we challenge them to be their best, that, that yeah. it's more of an inspiring way of parenting. And, mm-hmm. and you know, you look at what Jesus did. Okay, so Jesus yeah. took 11 unschooled teenagers and one Pharisee, Paul, mm-hmm. and he changed the world for them. Mm-hmm. Well, you look at how, I mean, I think that the way Jesus talked to his disciples, are, I, I always wonder why the Bible doesn't have more rules on parenting. I yeah. think it's because we see a lot between the relationship of God, the Father, and God, the Son. And we also mm-hmm. see the relationship between Jesus and his disciples a lot in the yeah. New Testament. Well, John 15, he said, uh, uh, he goes, um, he said, you did not choose me, but I chose you and mm-hmm. appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Okay. Mm-hmm. He tell, he's calling out who they are. These mm-hmm. are, I mean, can you imagine? I mean, think of the questions they ask him. Hey, Jesus, who's the greatest? Hey, hey, Jesus, you know, Peter would deny. He knows Peter's going to deny him. He says, mm-hmm. you know, all these things that they ask, these silly, stupid questions. And yet he says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear mm-hmm. fruit. So he calls out who they are and he calls out what they're going to do. Mm-hmm. The, the verse before that, he says, I no longer call you friends because mm-hmm. uh, uh, I don't want to call you servants, I should say, because a servant right. does not know his master's business. Instead, I've called you friends for everything from the Father I've made known to you. So, now again, Jesus didn't lose his position with his disciples by calling them friends. He still, that what, what would they call him? They call him Lord. They call him Rabbi because that's what he is. He's, he hasn't lost his position by elevating them and, and helping them. And, mm-hmm. you know, and, and out of that, Every one of those guys died a horrible death for him, except for John, who gets exiled to, to the island and writes Revelation. Um, every one of them dies for him. Why? Because he has inspired them to greatness. What do we do? That's what I'm talking about, especially to you dads who, you know, I believe that, you know, that we have different roles in the family. And one of the things dads do as much as anything is they bestow identity to their children. They give them identity, and if they do it well at the front through relationship and like Jesus did as an example of what Jesus did with his disciples, then those kids will go run through walls for the dad, and eventually they'll run through walls for God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that word inspire, Um, that, you know, it's our... Our job as dads is to inspire, you know, and uh, inspire and challenge uh, our kids. And uh, certainly that's, man, that's where we're at, you know. And uh, when you think about developing this this culture at home, uh, 
I always think about how when our family goes out to eat at a restaurant and we're just sitting there and we're, we're eating our meal, inevitably somebody will walk over and say, man, your kids are really good. How do you get them to, to be uh-huh. so good? And, and we're thinking, what do you mean? They've been messing around the whole time. They've been terrible. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah exactly. Uh, but, uh, you know, what it, the reality is, is it's because... This is what we do at home. We sit around the table and we eat at home and it's it becomes normal. And so uh, I think part of developing that culture at home is, is teaching your kids that what's normal or what should be normal uh, in the kingdom um, so that when they go out into the world, they're exp- even though the world might not see it as normal, they, they perceive it as normal. And, and, Did that and make that's, sense? Yes, and that's, you've hit it very well. That's culture, you know, mm-hmm. because um, what is the atmosphere of your home? And mm-hmm. home may be when you're at the restaurant, home may be when you're on the ball field, it may be in the mm-hmm. car, it may be at home. But I mean, what is the, you're always building uh, the culture. We talked about this before the podcast that you're always building the culture of your home. It's just a matter yeah. of, are you intentional about it or are you letting the culture flow? And so, um, you know, if, for example, um, you are building a culture, and, and culture, so all culture is, uh, is, well, let me back up. Culture is based on values. Mm-hmm. And a value is simply something that's important to you. So, for example, um, one of the things in our house that's a value is uh, one of the things we love and is important to us is basketball. Now, mm-hmm. that doesn't mean that, you know, uh, uh, that's, it, it doesn't always have to be spiritual things. So, you know, I, at the time of this recording, our Dallas Mavericks just got beat by the Celtics in the NBA Finals. Well, mm-hmm. I, because we're kind of a basketball family and we've played a lot and done a lot, we have family basketball games and things like that. When the Mavericks are in the Finals for the first time since 2011, we're watching it. And we're mm-hmm. experiencing it together. And so that's a value. That's part of our family culture. It doesn't have to be just, you know, godly stuff. But but mm-hmm. but that's, a, I, I use that as an example because a dad can, a mom and dad can go, yeah, okay. You know, we, we like music or, you know, or whatever it is. But but then it's also things like, um, you know, I was, my, my daughter, my second daughter, uh, Father's Day was just a few days ago and she gave me a, a, a voice text or whatever. And she said, dad, you know, I just want you to thank you for being a dad and doing things that were part of our culture. Like, he says, you coached our sports teams. And so, mm-hmm. therefore, now I think every dad should coach their sports teams because mm-hmm. that's part of what you showed me as a dad was what we did. Mm-hmm. You know, those type of things. And I hope that, I hope that helps parents to see that it doesn't have to be hard, but it doesn't need to be intentional. You know, mm-hmm. um, a value that we have in our home is uh, our children will be best friends. Okay, so somebody told us that many 25 years ago, probably, and we talked about it. We said, you know what, that is a value we want in our home. And so we have worked really, really hard. But today, my seven kids really do invest in each other. So what you put in place, you know, and and Jared, what you guys are putting in place right now are going to, you know, it wasn't always the case. And there Mm -hmm. were times that, you know, a couple of the relationships were really hard. But yet we kept fighting for it, and now it's become a reality in our family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, that, that boils down to the relational piece, right? Um, and uh, I know for me, growing up, even uh, I mean, it, it's fun. My parents didn't. I don't know if they're. I don't think that they're intentional about this. I just think that it's it's it was part of their value system was the relational piece. You know, uh, I always came home on time. It was never. I never fought that. You know, it was right. like. That's when I, yeah, I'll come home when I, you know, that's when I need to be home, um, you know. And uh, my sister and I, you know, as soon as we hit high school, I think that's when we really became really good friends, and we're still really good friends to this day, you know. And and so, uh, just uh, and and we tell that to our kids all the time as well, you know. Hey, friends are going to come and go, but you know, you guys are together forever, you know, your your family for life. And so, um, what just always coming to that relational piece. I have a, a really good mentor of mine that he had, man, I think he has four kids of his own and then they had two foster kids as well. Mm, wow. And they're all grown up now and they're all in ministry. And I remember asking him, I said, what, what did you do? Yeah, right. Like how, right. how did you, how did you, 
get all of your kids to not only love Jesus, but actually now serve in ministry in some capacity. Uh, and his immediate response was, I don't know. <laughs> I right, don't know what right. I did. But as he began to think about it, he said, you know, we were always invested in our kids' lives. And when they grew up, they didn't have to go anywhere else to, f- to, to find uh, good relationships because we Absolutely. had good relationships with them. And so when they became, yeah, they had friends uh, outside of us. Of course they did, but uh, it, it, wa- it was never like, oh, I can't get this from mom and dad, so I have to go get it from somewhere else. Right. Uh, that, that re- the relationship was so good and so strong, and, and, and they developed a culture where the kids actually wanted to be home with them. Sure. Like they enjoyed being at home with them. They didn't have to go seeking fun and, uh, you know, things outside of the home. And that's how it was for me growing up, too. I loved being at home. I loved playing games with my parents. I, you know, and, and uh, if, if we can create that culture and that atmosphere for our kids, and we like that. Like my wife is all about hos- hospitality. We love having the neighborhood kids come to our house. Uh, you know, we love that when they they come, that they, they it's a place that even their friends feel safe and feel comfortable uh, in that environment. And so, um, uh, that that that's just it's, it's such an important piece that I think gets lost in this idea of I got to make sure to fix the behavior of my child as they grow up. Well, I mean, so. Think about when you go into, I love that. And I think that um, parents need to be thinking about what is the culture? What is the atmosphere? You know, uh, think about your home. It's kind of like a greenhouse. And mm-hmm. uh, if you have, you know, what? why do we use a greenhouse? Because we can, we have the right water, soil, mm-hmm. light, temperature, all that is, is in that greenhouse. Well, yeah. um, that's the one place that we can actually, I, I get parents come to me all the time and they say, I hate the culture of my home. My kids fight all the time or, you know, nobody's happy there. Everybody wants to leave. And I'm like, that's awesome. And they look at me like I'm really weird because I'm like, the reason it's awesome is because you have influence over the culture of your home. Mm -hmm. And, and you can create for some kids, for many kids, actually, home is the worst place they go every day because Mm -hmm. it's the place they're the most criticized. It's the place they're the least listened to. It's the place that they, you know, there's a lot of jealousy there. There's a lot of things. And so, and and we like to teach parents how to, any parent, you know, Jared, I just, I've got this crazy belief that anybody can win at family and anybody mm-hmm. can win at culture and anybody can create the culture. Now, sometimes we got to overcome, you know, one of the things we say at Crazy Cool Family is, is that. The, the most important thing you can do for your family is to present them the healthiest version of you. So mm-hmm. back to, you know, your strong by design stuff. I mean, it's like, yeah, it's important. Sometimes we have to overcome things in our own life. I am grown, you know, if I wouldn't have been in a great church that discipled me and had some great mentors that helped me as a person, I could not be the dad I am today. Okay. Yeah. And I want to tell those dads, I was not the dad I am today, 25 years ago. I, mm-hmm. You know, it, it, it is a journey. It is some, but, you know, then we, we kind of apologize for it. Like, well, you know, I'm still screw up dad. Well, yeah, yeah, but I'm yeah. a lot but less screw up than I was 25 years ago. Yeah. There is a yeah. journey at which we can get better at it. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm not going to go play golf. That's one of the reasons I don't play golf, actually, is because I figured out I couldn't get much better at it. And I wasn't yeah. willing to put the time into it. I didn't like going out and not being any good at it. Well, because, but, I, but if I really focused on it, I could have gotten better. as, a, And I did get better as a golfer when I did it. Mm-hmm. Same thing with a dad and being a mom. Well, let's mm-hmm. become more of that and let's create a better and better culture in our home because it's going to help our kids to flourish. And it just makes family more fun. You know, I yeah. mean, you know, I, I tell people all the time, it's like, I, I got seven kids and family's the easiest thing I do every day in so many ways. Why? Because I know how to do the relationships and, and my kids are, have want to do the relationships so that we want to repair things and get we don't want to leave things hanging. Mm-hmm. And that makes family yeah. fun and it makes it enjoyable. Yeah, it makes it safe. Uh, that, that's what I want for every family listening here today. You know, mm-hmm. 
They say, you know, Scripture says don't go to bed angry. You know, and a lot of times we apply that to marriages. Um, we, we've, we've applied that to parenting as well. Um, and so uh, we don't want, you know, for so many times it's been, we've had uh, some sort of conflict where, you know, we sent kids to bed and we end up going and waking a, a kid up just to have a conversation with them because we're, we don't want them sitting in their, we don't want them, you know, having that thought process in their mind uh, about all the negative things that they could, who knows what they're thinking about, you know, especially uh, mm-hmm. I feel like kids today think about a lot, a lot more negative things than, than I did when I was a kid. Uh, and so it's one of those things that we want to, we want to repair that relationship, you know, and, so that they can go to bed and have yeah. a, a really good sleep. Yeah. Um, well, you know. it's those it's the influences in their life. I mean, they're being barraged every day. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's one of the reasons I love that you're sending your kid to cert- church camp because we have to give our kid experiences. We've got a. It's a different fight than it. I mean, it doesn't mean. I don't know if it's harder or easier. I, we always think that parenting's harder, as, you know, for the future than it was in the past or whatever. Sure. And, and we always reminisce about the older days or whatever. But it's definitely different. And if we don't have. Um, influence and 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 help our kids with with bringing spiritual bringing relational experiences into their lives um Mm -hmm. man they suffer but if we do we get in it and it just doesn't have to be that hard it's more what we're trying to do here parents is um we're trying to give you some things that become a way of life Mm -hmm. you know that you learn over time and you know I, i always compare it to like a you know you look at a baseball player that's in the major leagues and he, he makes that he hits the ball 400 feet and it looks effortless mm-hmm. well there's a lot of work that went into making that look effortless mm-hmm. but when they put the time in it does look effortless you know yeah. that's the way parenting can become in so many ways if you learn the right things and yeah. you build the right culture you can it what you're doing is like Man, it just looks like you got seven. I mean, I get people, again, tell me all the time that they say, you got seven kids and it looks like you're not even sweating. You know, it's <laughs> like, well, I'm, yeah, but I mean, you don't realize, one, what's going on behind the scenes, but also what yeah. we've learned over it. You yeah. know, it took seven kids to help me figure out how to be That's a dad funny. in so many ways. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Don, I've really appreciated your time. I, I feel like you and I, uh, could probably talk about this stuff forever um and 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 never stop the recording <laughs> uh, but uh, i i really appreciate you and, and what god has called you guys to do and really uh, revolutionizing uh i don't know if that's the right word but uh the, the helping families transform the way that they they are parenting at home and, and creating that the crazy cool family so if, if people want to connect with you or if you said hey here's a good starting point where would you send people yeah go to um, crazycoolfamily.com and then scroll down a little bit we've got a five-day challenge that's in there that i always like to and and um, that gets us connected with you we'll send you an email for five days that really is a gives you a vision so the the best way to start changing the way you are as a parent is to have a a different vision vision you know what we believe determines our behavior and so mm-hmm. in that five-day challenge we start to talk a lot about the beliefs that need to happen um that just like a lot of things we've talked about here and so then uh, it'll alert you to some other resources you can get to there's a um uh, that you can do but remember i want to leave you with this parents is that uh, go there and we will start you on the learning path it, it is a it, 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 it you know Learn to parent in a weekend. You learn to parent in months and years as your children mm-hmm. grow up. So give yourself some space, but become a learner. Go there and connect with us. And then we'll, we've will we got a podcast, 260 episodes. We've been doing it for, this is our sixth year of it. Lots of valuable teaching in there. And um, just connect with us and let us start to drip into you over time. Um, what you need to do, and where you need to focus to over time change the vision and the and to be able to inspire your kids to greatness yeah i love it well thank you so much again don thank you guys so much for listening to the strong by design podcast we release a new episode every single wednesday so make sure to check us out again next week and uh, we'll catch you then 
Thank you so much for listening to the Strong by Design podcast. If you found value in today's episode, please subscribe so that more people can find out about our show. Plus, you don't want to miss any future episodes with the amazing guests and topics we have lined up for you. Thank you.